Welcome back, Deep Your View TV viewers. Chris Nichols here from Deep Your View TV. And a look at this vintage Pentax case that I have here. It is actually hiding a brand new Ricoh GR3. I'm very excited to play with this because, as we all know, Ricoh does own Pentax as a company. And finally, we have a camera where Ricoh is using a lot of the technology inherent in the Pentax brand and putting it into this camera. So this is really exciting because this is now the amalgamation of all their technology together. I'm not going to need this case, though, because one of the great things that you notice right off the bat is that these are so compact you can take them anywhere. Now today we're shooting in the Ogden industrial area. We're going to check out a few different neighborhoods but as you can see it's a really bright sunny day. Expect a lot more squinting for me than usual but I'm just going to look for interesting colors and textures. This really is a snapshot camera. I mean that's how they advertise it. It's a great kind of camera that you can just put in your pocket, walk around casually, see what you see. Very akin to how we use our smartphones for photography. You know, today we take for granted these small, compact, fixed wide-angle digital cameras because digital's made this miniaturization very possible. But the Ricoh GR has a long history. I mean, this camera really started out in 35 millimeter film days with a body basically identical to this. It just barely was wide enough to hold a 35 millimeter film canister. Had a great 28 millimeter wide angle, and Ricoh has largely kept that same design till today. Now we did have a GR digital series. They had smaller one over 1.7 sensors, but still that 28 millimeter equivalent lens. Then we finally went into the GR and GR2 series where you had an APS-C 16 megapixel sensor. Now we've got the GR3 with a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor and actually a brand new lens. We've got so many improvements over the GR2 like the 24 megapixel sensor, the new processing engine, the image stabilizer. These are great additions but they do come at a cost. They require lots of energy and in such a small body we've got an issue here. Now this is actually an upgrade. The DB110 has a better milliampage battery than the old one. However, we're going from 300 plus SEPA rated shots on the old Ricoh GR2 to now just 200. That's very worrisome because today I don't have a spare battery. You're going to absolutely want one or two spare here. What's also worrisome is I've only taken 23 shots. In fact, the camera tells you when you turn it off how many shots you took today. And I've gone from three full bars down to two bars. So I don't know if that's completely indicative of the fact that I'm only going to get around 90 shots and then I'm screwed. We're going to find out. So of course I had to stop and take a picture of this. I mean, when's the last time that you saw a Mayflower brand moving truck? We're talking defunct for decades, at least here in Canada. So that brought me right back to my childhood. It was really nice. And of course, I'm taking a picture of it, and it does bring up a point that I want to mention here. Now, the tracking autofocus is something we always test on pretty much any camera, because that's what's new nowadays. We're getting all this deep learning, machine learning stuff. Tracking is very useful. Uh, it's not that useful on the GR3. Uh, for moving subjects, I find this not very sticky. It's very, very common that it will fall onto something else. But where I am really liking it is for actually these still lifes. You know, normally we would do a single point, single autofocus, press, uh, recompose and shoot, right? But here I'm using the tracking. I'll put it on something like the actual ship here, the ship icon, and then I'm free, especially with this lens, to move around and get in close and get far away and change my angle, and the tracking will just constantly take up that distance and refocus for me. Of course, it's not really moving quick. I'm not in a rush, so for that, I find it to be a really useful tool. So yeah, the Ricoh GR3 only has one single SD card slot, but oddly enough, something I never would have thought I would have said in over a decade now, it has internal memory, you know, way back to the classic days of digital cameras, which is fitting for such a classic camera. Two gigs, in fact, not bad. If you find yourself without an SD card, you'd have the ability to take some photos. We never forget SD cards on Deep Your View TV shots, do we? No. So if you want to call it a downgrade, the screen's resolution is down to just over a million dots. Uh, that's not a big deal. It's a very sharp screen, but it is the only screen you have. It doesn't articulate because the body's so small. I don't have an EVF at all. To get my digital display, I just have the screen on the back. We've had a lot of sunlight today and the screen's actually quite sharp and quite viewable, but I need it to be brighter in bright conditions. So no problem. I've got the ability to lower it for nighttime or to raise it for sunny conditions. The, I've got it at plus one right now. I really want to go to plus two. It would help out a lot, but 
My real concern is battery life. It chews up the battery life, and as we've already talked about, battery life is a real problem on this camera. So of course, I wanna do this while driving because it'll look really dynamic for the video, but Jordan has some issue with safety and following the rules, hence the car is not in motion. But it does bring up a point that I wanted to make, which is that we can charge through USB in this car to get this battery juiced up again. And the GR3 has a USB-C port, just the one. This does everything, HDMI, connecting to the computer, USB charging, I love this kind of stuff. So there we go, let's get this battery going. Okay, so we've headed out of the industrial sector. We've come downtown. We want to do some low light testing. But as you can see, it's still super bright outside. So we're going to head into this brand new establishment. It's Inner City Brewery, just opened up here downtown. We're going to do some low light tests and probably have a beer as well. So what really surprised me about the Ricoh GR3 is that we have a brand new 28 millimeter full frame equivalent lens, 2.8 aperture. And it surprises me because normally when a manufacturer comes up with a really nice lens like they had in the original GR and GR2, you expect them to just save costs and keep that lens going. But here we actually have a brand new formula. It's actually simplified. And from what I'm seeing here, along with the nine blade uh, rounded aperture, we're getting very sharp results and beautiful out of focus areas, even right to the corner. And now not only do we have improved sharpness and very nice optical performance in the background, but we're also getting better macro capability. The original lens was able to macro to 10 centimeters. Now this camera can actually go to 10 centimeters without going into macro mode. And then when you engage macro mode, we're down to six centimeters minimum. So you can just get that bit closer, push the background that much farther away, and just kind of have a lot of fun with out of focus areas and bokeh. So this all combines to give you a really nice experience optically as far as the lens is concerned. The only thing I would say about the lens, it's very well corrected, very low distortion. We are getting vignetting, but that is one of the easiest things to fix. The camera fixes your JPEGs automatically if you so desire, and in RAW, it's as simple as changing a slide around a little bit. The Ricoh GR3 does have a brand new autofocusing system. It's now a hybrid phase and contrast detect system. And for what I was using, I love the touchscreen interface. It's very easy to set up. I like how it's choosing targets um, and it's fairly sticky and I'm saying it's pretty fast and bright sunlight conditions. But I can't help but feel that it's still kind of a generation behind when it comes to speed. And that becomes really evident when we come into a low light situation like this today. A camera like this really feels like it should have a great manual focusing system. Not only to take advantage of some of the good macro capabilities it has, but also because it makes sense to do hyperfocal focusing and really dial that in when you're doing street photography. But unfortunately, we've got this bezel on the front that it removes to allow the even wider angle adapter to go on and filters and whatnot, but it doesn't have any sort of manual focus ring. And I know space is at a premium here, but I really think that a camera like this should have a great manual focusing system. I'm right back to doing it very much like a lot of point shoots do where I'm using the back dial and it's just not accurate, it's slow and it's annoying. So I find I'm not going to use it. But now you might be saying, okay, well, hang on, Chris, what about Ricoh's snap focus feature? And yes, that is still present here and it works very well. Basically, for those that haven't heard about it yet, I can preset a focusing distance, you know, one and a half meters, two meters, two and a half. I can set that and then when I full press the shutter or engage it with a button that I've customized, the camera will immediately go right to that focusing distance without worrying about trying to acquire anything. And that can be really handy for street photography and setting up hyperfocal shots. Okay, so I do I want to point out one thing very quickly here. I just took a few more shots because we have really good bouquet lights in this area. And uh, although I do find it very round, even to the corners, which is impressive, I am noticing if you look in the bouquet circles here, a little bit of noisiness, a little bit of busyness, but the autofocus rendition of areas, beautiful. All right, so we're back on the street, but we just popped into the camera store really quickly. We ran into our good friend Stefan and he lent me his 35 millimeter optical viewfinder on top there. Look at that. I know it's not 28, but I can use the edges of the frame. It's going to work fine. And this lets me now turn off the screen so I'm not going to waste as much battery life. And I'm also going to use the camera's snap focus capability. I've set it to two meters and I can just shoot through the viewfinder. So why do street photographers get so hung up on these cameras? Well, they're a very specialized tool that really serves their needs. So let's talk about that. First off, 
very small discrete body it's completely black there's no red dots to tape over you also get a very quiet leaf shutter which really doesn't disturb people you get 4,000 of a second maximum shutter speed at f4 or tighter and 25th of 100 at f2.8 and on top of that you have a built-in two-stop nd so basically bright sunlight's not going to be an issue for you but you also of course just get the fact that you have a really nice 28 millimeter focal length that gives you depth of field lets you do a lot of hyperfocal stuff lets you shoot wider than the scene and then crop and having that extra 24 megapixels now that just helps in that ability to crop a little bit tighter and still get the story and quality that you want to get last thing i would say on this camera is that snap focus just being able to set it to a predetermined distance and know that when i fire there's no delay whatsoever there's no hunting it just gets the shot makes this the perfect discrete grab shot camera now the Ricoh GR3's 24 megapixel sensor is probably very similar to what we found in the Pentax K70. No anti-aliasing filter, no low pass filter, but you do still have the image stabilization now which is sensor based and that can mimic an aliasing filter if you feel that moiré is going to be an issue. Now that sensor based image stabilizer is doing a really nice job. Four stops improvement over hand holding it. I mean it's not amazing, it's not going to blow you away compared to a lot of the technology that's out there, but it's good and coupled with this small camera gives you a really nice solid stable platform the other thing I like about this camera having the sensor with that moving rig dust has always been a problem for these cameras and for many cameras that have fixed lenses I mean think about Panasonic and Sony super zooms and stuff like that you get dust on the sensor there there's no getting rid of it without fully disassembling the camera so that's just not practical but this does actually have that ultrasonic piezoelectric shaker it just basically throws the dust off like you'd find on a lot of other slrs in the past and it's a nice feature to have to just kind of prevent that dust from getting on there and creating a lifelong problem okay so as usual now i've talked about photo quite a bit let's talk about video with jordan he's going to come on camera next and talk about the video capabilities of the gr3 no i'm good you're good i'm good i know it doesn't have 4k but what about the 1080p 60. it doesn't look good okay i guess the video doesn't look good so jordan's not going to talk about it but on the plus side, the video button that's awkwardly placed right over here, you can now customize that to change your focus or turn snap focus on or off or bring up your auto ISO. That'll be good. So if I had to give you an impression overall of the image quality on the GR3, I think you're gonna really enjoy it. I mean, the lens is super sharp. Not to say that GR lenses haven't been sharp in the past, they absolutely have, but this one is fantastically sharp and well made into that 24 megapixel resolution. I'm happy with the low light performance. It's comparable, it's got a nice organic look to it. And although dynamic range is not something we can really test, that will be on deepyearview.com very shortly. You'll get to see the full comparisons. But I did shoot an example here, really dark shadows, boosted up in a big way. And again, it looks very comparable. Overall, for what you want this camera to do, I think the image quality is to stand out for you and if there was any complaint i guess it would be that the jpeg color quality doesn't always have a very good vibrancy to it but you can always adjust that you can always change to a different color mode and of course it's dng files which are so easy to work with and open up in everything so i'm just going to take them change the saturation change the balance and be done with it so one thing to note that's missing on the rico gr3 is that we don't have a built-in flash or a pop-up flash and you know normally if i heard that on camera i'd be like well to the cares that's great i mean we hate those things they give you that deer in the headlights look they give you lots of red eye and stuff so normally i would say no big deal but actually on a camera like the rico gr3 where you have a street style kind of camera it can actually be really useful when you want to create that very edgy kind of fashion look or you know light up somebody for like a, a really sort of dramatic nighttime portrait on the street for example it's also good when you just want to control your background use a bright flash kill your ambient light and you can turn a busy background to a very dark scene so I can see how it has some creative purpose here and I can see why people are missing it. The Ricoh GR3 is just under thousand dollars US around twelve hundred dollars Canadian and that puts it firmly between the two Fuji cameras which I say would compete with this. You've got the X70 which has the same focal length but although much more affordable I feel is a far less capable camera. It doesn't really autofocus well at all, doesn't have that fun factor. You do have the Fuji X100 F series, quite a bit more expensive than this. Uh, I don't like the 35mm lens and frankly I find that body really bulky. The key thing here is that I've got a small, capable, high image quality camera that's fairly affordable and that I can carry with me all day long. I'd almost say, although it might seem like a strange connection, that this is very similar to how I would use my smartphone. Unlike a smartphone though, we get manual control and we get some really cool autofocusing features like the snap photography for street photography that really makes it far more usable than a smartphone. So, 
you know, if you want a camera that's a lot of fun, you don't mind carrying extra batteries, and you don't need any really good video capability, I think the Ricoh GR3 is worth a look. So let us know your comments below. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think. Check out our Instagram feed, our Twitter feed. Talk to us and let us know how you feel this camera is going to fit in the marketplace. Otherwise, we'll see you with another review very, very soon.